In this video, we'll go through how we can use this Green's functions formalism to solve a second order differential equation with non-constant coefficients. So we previously saw how to solve these types of equations when a2, a1, and a0 were constants. This time we're not going to assume that. Now they can be functions of x. And we'll change variables from our previous uh, description. We previously used time, now I'm going to use x but obviously the same idea holds regardless of what you call your variable. So the idea to solving this type of differential equation with uh, the Green's function is you first have to find the Green's function which satisfies uh, this differential equation. This has to be equals because the Green's function is an impulse response function. We change the non-homogeneous term to a delta function. If we're able to solve this equation to find our Green's function, then the solution to our original differential equation of interest will have a solution of this form. So once you find the Green's function, you just have to integrate it with the original non-homogeneous term and you get your final solution to your differential equation. We're not going to assume a specific form of f of x. We're going to solve this in general, mostly by going through how we can solve this differential equation up here. And this is, uh, as you mentioned, that this is of course subject to the boundary or initial conditions of your of the problem you're trying to solve. So we can come up with a, an algorithm of sorts for finding the Green's functions. This isn't to say that this is just something you should memorize. You should understand the process, but then eventually it's just a matter of following those steps. So we first have to look at the case when X is not equal to X prime, because then we can get rid of this Delta function. So we're to put in the perspective of the previous motivating example, we're looking at what happens when the force is not being applied. So again, when x is not equal to x prime, the delta function is just equal to zero, and we're left with a homogeneous differential equation for the Green's function. And the key condition for Green's function is to keep in mind that this is a physical property. This represents the response of a physical system to an external impulse. And being a physical property, or a physical quantity, if you will. It must be continuous. Okay, so whatever Green's functions you find, it must be continuous uh, everywhere. In particular, what this means is when you look at X is equal to X prime, then the left-hand side has to hold. It has to be the same thing. So 
So this equation still has to be satisfied for whatever Green's function satisfies the homogeneous differential equation. So what we're gonna do then is integrate both sides of this equation under this condition that G X, uh, X prime has to be continuous and built up our solution that way. And we're only going to integrate about x is equal to x prime. And so over a very, very small interval about this point. And what that means is uh, a one of x, a not of x, a one of x, and a two of x are approximately constant over this very, very small interval we're going to consider. So integrating both sides and treating our coefficients as constants. Okay, integrating about this point means take, taking a little bit to the left of x prime, so x prime minus epsilon, and a little bit to the right of x prime, so x prime plus epsilon. And again, we were able to take out the coefficients because we're assuming that they're about constant in this uh, small interval. Recall that when you integrate the delta function, if your domain of integration includes the point x is equal to x prime, then this is just equal to one by definition. Just to write it out, this is what we have. This is just a, a side remark. So carrying out our integration under the condition that G has to be continuous. If you integrate a continuous function over a very small interval and then take the, uh, the, the difference, then this term over here is approximately equal to zero. Okay, because you're, whatever it, this integral is, you're evaluating it at two points that are very close to one another, which means that you're basically subtracting the same number. So epsilon tends to zero because we're only looking in the neighborhood of the point x is equal to x prime. This combined with this leaves us with the following expression. <clears throat> 